The United States, in 2006, became a signatory to the Convention on Cybercrime. Lovely, and it's got those key components. You've got the sui generis provisions regarding interference with information. Since the idea of interfering with a computer or data doesn't have any correspondence in traditional common law, uh, the United States came up with the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act to deal with it. Um, so too does the convention talk about each member state having a statute dealing with either unauthorized access, to, well, unauthorized access to a computer and interference with data. The convention also talks about computer-related crimes, which essentially are using computers to commit fraud, a standard crime we all have. It talks about content-related crimes, which we begin to see a fracturing of interests. The one provision which was prohibited content for all member states was child pornography. And even there, special codicils are permitted to let states opt out based on certain provisions of national law, such as the mere simple possession of child pornography, a state may choose not to criminalize it. Or the possession of simulated images of child pornography uh, may or may not be criminalized. That's an issue here because you cannot criminalize simulated images in the United States uh, per Supreme Court precedent. Copyright was the one other big area that was mentioned in the convention regarding criminal activity online. And criminal copyright has been around a long time. It is not technically, you know, it's not one of these special cyber crimes more than fraud is. Yet, you can see again, stakeholder interest coming to fore saying this is what we need to control and this is where we need to let national interests, if possible, opt out. A key provision though were procedural ones dealing with how do we work together. Uh, the, pr the principle of dual criminality generally means if we're going to work together on a crime committed by one of my citizens in my country against citizens of your country, in your country, it has to be something we both consider to be a crime. And this convention contains some mandates regarding how you ramify those, how you overcome some of the objections. Um, it sets out that there will be cooperation between investigative authorities and in procedures for how to do that and contacts 24-7 to initiate such an investigation because of the sort of F, the ephemeral nature of electronic evidence. It also provides for the rapid extradition of people from country, offending country A back to victim country B. The People's Republic of China is not a participant in this convention. Neither is Russia. Neither is Japan. Uh, when discussing it with, uh, with Pavel, he said the primary focus for the, uh, for the Russian Federation was not that the substantive laws, but the fact that they will not extradite one of their citizens to another country. Extradition is a key aspect of sovereignty. And right now, they will not cooperate in that realm. Now, while the Russian Federation has most of the same statutes as the United States does, or as required by the Convention on Cybercrime, there are some differences. You can get anywhere from uh, 12 months to 20 years in the United States for unauthorized access to a computer, depending on the amount of money involved, the targeted machine, things of that nature. I want to think that the maximum provision for unauthorized access under Article 272 of the Russian Criminal Code, crimes within the sphere of computer information, is six months. Professor Postukov, why is that the case? And he says, well, it's not a concern for us. That leads to the issue, the asymmetry of targets, computer, computer targets in the world, which is an issue for terrorism, crime, and cyber war. Computer hackers in Russia don't go after machines in Russia, because what am I going to get? we go after machines in the United States, we can get a lot. Um, the Ivanov and Gorshkov prosecutions uh, around 2000 for some hackers down in South Central Russia who managed to compromise I don't know, 20 or 30 major US corporations um, was, a really, was a very contentious issue 